Hello, welcome to the Thursday, December 12, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad's malware of the week today was actually German mail spam. Uh, this one again included a Word document and delivered TrickBot. Basic scheme here again, where the Word document wants you uh, to insta enable macros so it can do its evil deeds and download additional malware, which happened to be TrickBot in this particular case. Given the language, this is likely targeting German recipients, but uh, often uh, this spam is sent kind of to anybody. It's a resume, first of all, and then also a rental agreement is sort of the title of the document that's uh, being used in this particular attack. Personally, I've seen a ton of resume spam, of course, over the years. The rental agreement is a little bit new and different, so maybe they're trying out a couple new tricks here to see if they are successful. Well, I've ever heard the saying that you shouldn't really invent your own crypto. Well, F-Secure looked at a lock, the Kiwi smart lock and found interesting vulnerability in how it is encrypting its messages. The main problem here is this lock is using Bluetooth low energy. Bluetooth low energy had a lot of problems, so they're actually encrypting the messages being sent from the mobile application to the lock and back, which sounds like a good idea. They're using with AS128 ECB, a reasonable, a good encryption algorithm, but what they are getting wrong is the key generation. Now, what they're essentially doing here is they're using the MAC address of the device in order to generate the key. According to F-Secure, Kiwi went through quite a bit of uh, tricks and so to make it difficult to reverse this algorithm. They are, for example, checking if the device is rooted and the application will not run if it is, but still it's not that terribly difficult to figure out the algorithm. And with that, knowing the MAC address, you would be able to take over control of the device. Or worse, if you don't register and set up the lock at all, if you just use it as a mechanical lock, well, then you're kind of even more vulnerable because now anybody could essentially link this lock with their account. And if we got updates from uh, Google, Google released uh, Chrome 79. Now it fixes uh, two critical security vulnerabilities, but also does add a couple new security features. Phishing detection apparently is improved now. In the past, Google's safe browsing list only updated every 30 minutes. Now it's supposed to update in real time, whatever that means. Also, if you are entering a password that has been leaked in the past, basically using some form of the have I been pwned list here, then you will be warned that this password may be compromised. Also moving forward, starting a month from today, Chrome will mark all websites that are using TLS 1.0 or 1.1 as insecure. So essentially we'll treat them just like they're using HTTP. And then we got a little bit of follow-up to some of the patches released yesterday. First of all, iOS. iOS apparently fixed one denial of service vulnerability in the airdrop feature that allowed an attacker to essentially overwhelm a device with too many airdrop messages. Never a good idea to leave airdrop open to the public. You should either turn it off or only allow your contacts to send you messages. Also, as part of this update, 
Apple implemented a spam filter for messages. This apparently is causing some problems with legitimate messages being flagged as spam. Now, if you're sending a message, you may get an error message back telling you that your message was classified as spam. The recipient will not see the message at all, but you can then ask the recipient to add you as a contact. This will sort of override this spam filter. Well, that is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.